Hello everybody to the second game of today. Midwinter versus ERN APAC. And you can see the lineups on the screen right now. And uh yeah, so Midwinter does need a couple of more minutes. So we're just gonna stall them out with me talking some stuff and uh definitely having a look at some of these profiles. Because believe me, whew, there's some nice boys in here. Yeah, you can see the lineup here. Um, by Midwinter here, we have Case. Then, uh, no idea how to pronounce that name. Sorry for that. Yuya, Asher, Saif, and Zizo is going to be the sub. So, uh, yeah, let's have a look. This is Mr. Well, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Um, yeah, definitely. He's Golem on his main. He's down ladder, maybe. We don't know. He got a top 1k finish. So, not already... Good player on red ladder, and uh, tournament finishes already. Yeah, three below, like on that 300 mark. That top 10 also really nice here. Obviously, some very good. Actually, 123 ladder fish are arena season finish. Okay, interesting. So very good. To be honest, 2020 obviously is kind of given here. And uh, Javo, who is playing? Wait, who is he playing for? Javo, yeah, Javo is playing for uh, Javo. Javo? I don't know. He's playing for Midwinter here. So let's have a look at his profile. Also, very good. Good finishes here. Uh, not much on tournament finishes, but still got that 407 here. And also some good arena with the 2020, obviously. It's kind of needed in this match here, to be honest. Yuya, also a beast of a profile. 46. Did we just have 46, uh, 47? And now we. Wait, now we have 47. I think we just had the 46, but yeah. Look at these tournament finishes. 1-3, one, 108. He is doing good. Ladder finishes on point as well. So I'm expecting a, some good plays from you yeah, here. 2020, as always. Saif, I mean, we can look at this forever, to be honest. Like. Alright. Also, tournament boy. Ain't got a 2020. First boy without a 2020 here. Asher. Let's see. You got 2020 again. Again, some tournament finishes here. I mean, Gaze could be interesting as well. I see. 31. 20. Yeah, he's doing good in the tournament. Yeah, this is going to be a phenomenal match, everybody. I hope you are as excited as I am. Yeah, Van. I'm telling you, Vancio. Oh, and Ed. Yes. Yes, by, by Bit is uh, sponsoring this. So that's why we're having that little ad there. Because without them, there'd probably be no Gem League. Alright, so yes, Skeleton Man uh, Dragons are a band. And uh, same with Royal Delivery and Heal Spirit. So new cards, no, no, thank you. And, uh, yeah, I think... Okay, five more minutes. Yeah, we're almost there here. Two more minutes and we should be starting. Hopefully. We'll see. Maybe it takes a little more time here for midwinter. So, yeah, format-wise, we are playing a 5v5 King of the Hill today. So, that means uh, both players will send out their first player, which actually we do have the lineup. So, let's have a look, which is going to be game one. So, we have Kaze versus Diego in game number one. And uh, whoever wins that will play against the second player of the other team. And uh, we'll carry on this way with uh, winners staying in until one team has no players left. So it could keep going into a 5-0. But it also... See, the thing that happens with King of the Hill is some reverse sweeping. Meaning there could be one player that beats four players off the other team. But then the last player off the other team just managed to beat him. And then beat the other four players, right? So... That's what we call a reverse sweep, and uh, that is very exciting to watch. But uh, yeah, we'll see how this is going to go down. A lot of good players in here, gotta say. And uh, yeah, like it's it's going to come down a lot to matchups here. Like who has matchup, who can outplay, who outcycle. Like our, our play is going to be, well, our play is going to be very hard here in this, like, yeah. There's a very, very, some very strong players in here, and uh, they probably know the matchup as 
much as you can, right, to the very top here. And, uh, yeah. So it's gonna come down in the end a lot to match up here, who's just... Yeah. But we'll see. Maybe we will see some mistake. Maybe we will see some 300 IQ plays. We definitely are excited to be watching here. Well, I am. I hope you are too. And, uh, yeah. So it is 5 past here. Let's see what's gonna happen. Some players are still joining. Well, are there players? Half a boss. Mini Diego. Actually, let's have a look at. I mean, we've seen Kaze's profile, but let's have a look at Diego when I find him. So I don't know. Oh, yeah, actually, boss is in here. And there's a boss. Oh, that's going to be confusing. Well, uh, there's Diego. Right be below Kaze. Yeah, okay. Ah, only a 17, not a 2020. Doesn't say much, though. There's, there, there haven't been too much of these 2020 wins, so definitely has some tournament finishes. And uh, definitely a skilled player as well. So this might as well be a second account? I don't know. We'll see. Well, no, we will not see, but definitely a strong player. That is for sure. Oh, actually, Fabi is going to play for Diego. So no Diego. Fabi is going to be the boy. So let's have a look at his profile then, shall we? He is at 4k. Alright. So, oh shit. Didn't expect much, but he does have the 2020 and some tournament finishes. Actually, my, my like this batch-wise looks maybe even better than Diego's. But uh, yeah, that doesn't mean much. That does not mean much. We will see. And uh, we're able to start here. So first game is going to be Fabi from Midwinter against Kaze from... ER and APAC. And uh, yeah. Okay, so Kaze from. Wait, yeah, Kaze from Fate Pack. Uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me. It's Kaze from ERN is going to be requesting. So that means ERN is probably going to be on the blue side for the rest of this match. But we'll see. Hey, John, how you doing? Alrighty. Again, uh, Royal Delivery. Heal Spirit and the uh, uh, Skeleton Dragons are banned. So that's a no-no. Apart from that, you can play what you want. And we are playing 5v5 King of the Hill here. Let's see who's going to take game number one. As soon as they request. Okay. All right, there we go. I swear the urge to accept the friendly battle is unbelievable. <laughs> but we will not. We will show discipline. All right, Kaze versus Fabi here. Let's see. Fabi has been just like, yeah, there has been a lineup change last minute from Midwinter. Uh, I'm not sure. Diego probably was not reachable or something. But yeah, Fabi is going to take over here. So let's see how he does here in the first game if he's ready at some point all right okay because it doesn't want to <laughs> wait diego is here okay so i don't know why they changed but they did change fabi for diego nonetheless Ah, oh, Diego doesn't... Okay, whatever. Still waiting for Fabi here. Alrighty. It's Fabi online. Why the change if Diego is here but Fabi not? I don't understand. Once, like, didn't he just join? Yeah, less than an hour ago. It doesn't show closer. I think he just joined, right? Yeah, he just literally just joined. Ah, uh, he wanted to be fourth, not first. Okay, what? Well, what the hell? Winbu, <laughs> poor boy. Okay. Yeah. So what, what you don't know is, um, again, these teams. Um, I think 
Yaren has some, no, actually Midwinter has some Japanese players. So, so it's very early for them. And I think for the other team it is about midnight. So, so very extreme hours for both teams here. So, yeah, I mean, that kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to get the players ready and everything. Especially, like, at 8 o'clock in the morning at a, sun, a Saturday. Okay. But, uh... Okay, so we have a new lineup, which is going to be Mini, Javo, Boss, Fabi, and then... Well, Cock and Balls. <laughs> I don't know, just the 8i. AD. I'm just gonna call him 8D. I don't even know. ID, what's his name? I don't know. Right, so Kazi versus Mini is going to be the first game here. Uh, yeah, again, some difficulties here from Midwinter, but uh, I think they are resorted. We have a new lineup here with five people, and I think we're ready to start, hopefully. Let's see if Mini Minter is uh, here. Uh, he's in a clan, I've seen him. Well, he's. I think that's his Mini. You were Mini Minter. There you go. That's the boy. Look at these tournament finishes, by the way. Look at this. Ha! <laughs> Doesn't even have a 2020. <laughs> right. Okay. Can we? Shall we? Will we? Hello? <laughs> yeah, Mini is here. Okay, that's good. Manisha, we have lag. Wait. Are you sure? And, uh, by the way, hello, Armando. Didn't see you there. Alright, Kaze is requesting here again. Mini Majors seem to be ready. So we should be starting soon. Alright, there we go. And somebody just joined. Anyway, first game of this match here Midwinter versus ERN APAC. And we are clashing. Right, Skelly says the first play here from Mini Minter. So already he doesn't want to go for the double elixir. He wants to use that single elixir here. He's now waiting a little bit. So maybe, I don't know. I still think he's kind of cycly. I might be a hog rider. We see Snowball coming down again. Yeah, it's just. Hi, a Miner. Getting caught by the Prince, though. Interesting. So already Mini Minter is coming in with them big guns. I bats and Ice Golem will be able to deal with that though, but that is no kind of pursuit from Kaze. Elixir wise, that is a slight leap by Mini Minter as he comes in with the Zappies. Very unusual card, to be honest here. Haven't seen Zappies in a while, so I'm interested in how Mini Minter is going to use them here. Double Prince and Zappies is what we've seen from his deck so far, so pretty sure he does have maybe a giant. He does have a graveyard. So that's interesting with a Graven as well as an aggressive poison hitting these bats here. Very nice. So I'm not sure if he's using another big giant, uh, big um, tank. And that's 911, and that's probably what Kaze should be calling right now because that was a bad joke. Anyway, <laughs> last card of Mini Major is still not sure here. Kaze probably playing the balloon. Yes, he's coming in with a balloon minor push. Muskie's ready as the last card for Mini Major. So, yeah, Mini Major is actually playing a double prince graveyard, which is uh, very interesting. Uh, I don't know, haven't seen that. Probably something for the new uh, meta. Very interesting how he plays, and it seems like a very good idea, to be honest to me. Like, the Zappies give you a lot of time here on defense, and with the Prince, or the Dark Princess, especially what you want. Alright, lots of stuff going on. Is the Balloon gonna get there? That Snowball almost got it there. Ice Golem at the last second as well here. The F damage of the balloon is getting damaged, but it's not enough. 40 seconds left to go, and Mini Minter keeps coming in with the Dark Prince graveyard here. But Mini Pekka actually keeps the Dark Prince out of the tower range here. Aggressive poison is coming in, and Skelly is beginning to stack up. Snowball is there, so the tower is not going to go down. The balloon is very close actually to getting a hit with 24 seconds left to go. Could be the change, could this be the change that we need? Is the balloon going to reach? That is going to be a hit as well as the death damage. Getting very close to 304 here, so they're literally 11 apart right now. Another balloon is coming in. Kaze is cycling like mad. Miner is not getting caught, getting damage on the tower here. Balloon is not getting death damage, but a bat is on there with two seconds left to go. 
That is going to be the lose for mid winter and the 1 0 here. Uh, excuse me, for mini winter and the 1 0 for mid winter. Wait, am I right? I need to recheck. I think I'm wrong with who is. I need to. Yeah, mini winter is for playing for midwinter. Excuse me. Just making sure again here. Okay. So that. Again, Kaze has won this. So 1 0 for ERN. Okay, so next opponent here from Midwinter is going to be Havel, another very strong player, but uh, yeah, as you see, like Kaze is not impressed by strong players. Mini Minter had a good matchup though. I mean, he's a very strong player on a, uh, on his own. So, wow, in tournaments as well as uh, as uh, ladder, by the way, very strong player. So let's see how far Kaze can take it here again. It is gonna come down a lot to match up here. Like some matchups are just not winnable. But uh that's not what we're here for. We are waiting for these 55-45 matchups where both players just have to play their very, very best to win. And uh yeah. Havo versus Kaze here. Let's see how this is gonna go down. Again, we are playing a 5v5 here, so that means Midwinter is already down to 4 players. But that's not too far behind here. If Kazi would win another one, it would be looking different. But uh, again, in King of the Hill, one player is all you need. Miner has a first play here, getting caught by the Knight though. Hmm. Already telling us something about the decks here, Kazi might be playing a Graven. Havo is playing a Sparky Miner? I do not understand. I. Gotta say, like, so far, Midwinter has been coming up with interesting deck combinations here. So I'm interested in what Kavo is playing. Exactly. Here we see the Miner coming down from Kaze as well. Okay. Wow, Kaze, yeah, he's playing with Wall Breakers. He's very cycling, but that didn't use much. Sparky is getting a shot on a tower. Wow, that is a big damage lead already for Kavo here. Well played, and he's keeping up the pressure, actually. He's giving Kaze no time to breathe right here. Excuse me, and uh, yeah, he's getting some more damage here on the tower. Both his towers are very healthy though. Wall breakers could be interesting here. I think Hubbo is just gonna take them. Yeah, he's gonna stab them, take one damage here. It's gonna go again for the counter push. We see the boys coming in though, and that should be defended. Yes, that is nonetheless here. Kaze under pressure. 1 minute and 40 seconds left in this game, and his tower is already down at 800 here. So that's a lead of about 1k for Hubbo already. Not a Sparky in the back. I still, like, it's a very interesting deck by Havo here. He has a Miner, he has a Sparky, and then he has lots of Goblins and Bats and Minions. And... I'm very, I'm wondering a lot what, what his last card is going to be. Give Miner here on the Bats. Wall Breakers are coming in as well. Are the Bats enough? Yeah, with that Zap they are. So it doesn't want to take too much damage. One Bat is helping out on the Miner, and that's going to deny some hits there. Very interesting. Sparky still on point to get the Tower damage here. Ooh, whoo, that was close. Kavo probably already hoping for, but now he's just gonna go for another Sparky. And Kaze has to use his opportunity to go aggressive here. Minion Horde is being placed. I gotta say, this split of the Minion Horde might not be the worst. Kinda denying Kaze the opportunity. Oh wow, he is playing a Goblin Shine Sparky still. With the Miner, interesting. Yeah, he's gonna go for the Poison because of the Bats and the Sparky here. And uh, Sparky's not gonna get a tower hit, so again, good defense by Kaze here. He's getting actually closer in to damage, so interestingly enough, Double Elixir has actually helped him. Well, I mean, maybe not that much help. The, the first push off Havo was a bit lucky here with his... I mean, it was well played, you don't get me wrong, but uh, getting that Sparky hit that early on was kind of mean, to be honest here. Let's see, big push coming in here for the Golden Shine with the Sparky. Spark is gonna go down. Yeah, with the poison. Give value on a poison here. And uh, yeah, because it's just getting closer and closer. Wall are coming in here. Mine for both sides. Few comments at the back. 
And, uh, okay, defense from Gabo. But, uh, yeah, he's... Okay, 2.06 left to go here. So, these Spear Goblins will not get a shot in. Another miner is coming its way, though. 139, that was a Spear Goblin hit with the Zap. That is game for Gabo here. Making the score even again with a solid 1-1. It was a really close game, to be honest, here. Well played by Kazi here. I think Havo had to match up, but uh, Kazi kept on the pressure here, but it wasn't enough. And okay, <laughs> now it's going to be Havo versus Japanese name. Uh, I would have hoped to see a name here that I can actually use. Well, I guess... Is it even Japanese? I hope it's Japanese. I think it's Japanese. I don't even know. See, I'm bad at this. I will call it... I mean, we have Havo, and... It does look like like a Pao. So I'm just gonna call him Pao. Right? Like, it's a P-A-O, maybe? Don't want to be offensive, but... That's how I read it now. So, Pao from Midwinter... Uh, excuse me, from Iran versus Havo from... Mid... No, wait. Yes, from midway. I'm getting confused on this, sorry. Right, Mega Minion against Mega Minion here. Um, see, so with these people here, I'm not really too sure what kind of decks they play. It's very interesting. Sparky in the back again from Powell here. Is this going to be a giant Sparky this time? We will see. Hava has the cage. He has the Ice Golem. He has Prince. That could be a Golem. If I'm, I don't know. But he has the prince that's coming down the lane here. Okay, Pao's gonna come in with the goblin giant. Ooh, Cage actually had a good timing and dying there. Wow. Getting that Sparky in was actually relatively crucial. He had the guards though. Prince is surviving. Prince is surviving though. And getting some hits on the Sparky, which is not good. Ooh, Sparky almost died. But yeah, no tank here for the Sparky. Mega Minion survives as well. So not too much damage has happened before, but a lot of units have died. This kid go like in 30 seconds we're in double elixir, which is probably gonna make this game very aggressive. But I can't be wrong here. And there is the prince coming in with the graveyard actually from Havo. So is this again a double prince graveyard? Or is it just a prince graveyard? We will see graveyard nonetheless is getting a lot of damage here. Aminu Mi Aminu. Thank you very much. So Amuro is uh, it's not Pow, it's Amuro. Thank you for that knowledge, that is very good. So yeah, we have Havo versus Amuro. And uh, so far, Havo is doing really good. He is ahead in damage, about 900. Maybe, yeah, 800. 850. Okay, 833, but whatever. <laughs> it's not even 833, whatever. It's 837. Sparky from power here on the way. Hunter's gonna deal with the Mega Minion. Ooh, Goblin Chant from the Hunter as well. Interesting Prince there by Havo. Gotta say, that might be a little bit too dangerous. But yeah, he has the guards. See, Havo's Prince is not getting far here. There's no time for the graveyard. And he just used 5 Elixir for free. So that, yeah, that was a little mistake here. Sparky's still not dead. It's getting more shots. Oh, he Excuse me, Ice Golem is getting that spark here. Mega Minion on track to get damage in, so yeah, with 10 seconds left to go, Havo is still in the damage lead, but once again, he has to defend this here. He did a good job the last time, though. Ooh, defensive Graven on a Sparky here. That is going to be helpful. Just delaying that, getting poison value as well. Goblin Shine is getting a lot of hits here as well. Yeah, this is looking very good. Oh, the Sparky does survive and does get a Bavarian's help here. But is that thing? It's not going to shoot you. Next Sparky's on the way here from Uruguro, though. He is cycling him fast. Graveyard Prince coming in. Prince is tanking. Guards are here. Skellies are locking on. Poison value as well. Havo is doing really good damage. Is that going to be enough? It's going to be close. But yeah, I mean, that at the very least is poison range. So one more poison from Havo will be the win for him and so far it's looking good in terms of defense. This tower is still at 2k here. So it's gonna take a while for Amuda to take down that tower here. Even though that Mega Minion just went really crazy. But uh, yeah, Havo is able to defend so far here. Another cage and he should be back to his poison by now. He's gonna log it anyway, just safer. Well played by Havo and that 
means it's 2-0 for Midwinter here. Our first player in this match to beat two players in a row. Let's see how far he can take it. And uh, now it's going to be Yuya. Also, a very... Like, everybody of these teams is just super OP. But just look at Yuya. Look at his finishes, bro. Oh, my God. I'm excited for Yuya. Let's see if he can beat Chavo. He is ready. He is very ready here. Chavo, not so much so far. Well, let's see. Yuya and Chavo are in game. So, let's go. Game number four here. Is Yuya going to be able to even out the scores? Or is Chavo going to go ahead with a 3-1? Wall breakers here. They're gonna run into the cage. Interesting. So yeah, Hava playing them wall breakers with a mini pekka. Interesting. Mini pekka should be helpful normally. Baby dragon from Yuya. So that could be a graveyard. Yeah, Hava is playing interesting here with the cycle. Getting a miner on the tower. Good guards though. Definitely valuable guards here. Not too much damage. So what do these guards tell us? Was the poison? Uh, no, no. Wall breakers are coming in. That's what I know. Okay. Barry and Barrel. I gotta say, I'm not too sure. Oh, it is Lava Hound. So, what's too sure about saying that because of the guards? They kind of. Oh, the mini Pekka is gonna die because of the tower here. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Luke, aka Yuya. Okay. He's gonna sweep. I see. Well, Yuya is definitely a strong player. And uh, so far, it is relatively even, though. Uh, he has a slight advantage here in the Elixir, though. But we have the Muskie on the field. He's gonna go for an Inferno. Uh, I gotta say, that's kind of in unexpected. Let's see, is he, support that? Is he gonna support that? No, Wall Breakers are coming in. Pretty much denying any support that he could give to the Inferno. But uh, Inferno's just... Yeah, I mean, that was about 80, maybe 150. So good Inferno, I guess. Oh, interesting counter push. He's already forced to go for a Miner. Miner's died nearly because of the Mini P.E.K.K.A. Tower luckily is on... Oh, wow. Tower was on the Mini P.E.K.K.A. But, uh, Chavo actually zapped that, so he forced a Guards from Yuya. Or from Luke. Wallbreakers seem dangerous here, but, uh, maybe Yuya's just gonna take it. He has gotten a lot of damage here on the right-hand side. And he's gonna go for a Lava Hound at the start of the double elixir. Havo is gonna answer with his own Mega Knight. So is this going to be a tower trade? That is the big question here. Who's gonna get this tower? Again, we are in the last 40 seconds already. This is one of the last pushes. If one of these players get the tower and the other does not, that could be it. This push is super important right now. Cards catch the miner. Mini Pekka is scary. Miner is there, but yeah, again, Mini Pekka is probably getting a tower, and Havo definitely gets a lot more damage out of this, but you gotta see, he does not take the tower. 161 left to go, and Havo only has the Miner here for direct damage, but that Miner is gonna be enough with the Zap here. 10 seconds left to go, both of these are able to take down the tower, Havo has the second tower on 666, so it's looking good. Another Wall Breaker coming in, goes into the cage though. But we are now into the Sudden Death. Again, what a big play here, actually, from Chavo. They went in for the tower trade, but Chavo did not have enough of one tower. He went for a double lane push, and it paid out really, really much. He almost didn't take the first tower, but he managed to do it in time. And now he's adding a lot of pressure on the main tower with that wall breaker. That is going to be game number four for Chavo. Really well played. And that means that score-wise... Midwinter is doing really good right now. It is 3-1. So two more players left from ERN APEC. And uh, yeah, that means Chavo has a three-win streak. So that is uh, close to calling it a sweep in my mind. But uh, yeah, sweep obviously means sweeping them completely here. So let's see. Two more players here. Asher is one of them. If Chavo wins this, that would be very drastic for ERN here. With having one player left to go against Midwinter with four players, that would be not where you want to be.
Uh, that would be very difficult to get back from. So let's see if Asher can defeat Chavo here. He needs to. It's very important that he wins this. Maybe matchup is going to be on his side. We will see. We see that Mega Minion. We see the Ice Wizard. Okay. Ash is coming in here with the E-Wiz as well. Interesting. So, so far, not too much information. Fireball from Chavo. Not too sure what he's playing. Ah, oh, okay. Ash is coming in with the Dark Prince. So, that might be a graveyard. Chavo is coming in with the Prince now. As an answer to that Dark Prince. So, let's see. Will we see spells on that? No. Oh, wow. The tower actually managed to get down uh, the shield off the Dark Prince. So, the Prince charge directly affected Dark Prince's life here. That was a very cool interaction here. Royal Giant from Asher, excuse me. Okay, that's a new one for me. And uh, Tornado is coming in. The Royal Giant didn't get hit so far. Let's see, Baby Jack luckily gets a Scully, so that's a lot less damage here on that Royal Giant. Royal Giant is getting one shot only. Wow, good defense by Chavo. So already, that's going to be difficult for Asher. Not sure what Chavo is playing, but it still looks like a graveyard to me. Interesting lock. As we see a Mega Minion and a Dark Prince behind the towers here. Toot toot. Alright. Prince is there, gonna catch that. He was in the back, you're getting some damage on the Mega Minion. But it's only gonna be so much here. 10 seconds of that double elixir as Kavo is starting the push here. Will we see his last card now? His win condition? It is a Royal Giant as well. Excuse me, what? Wait, this is pretty close to a... Wow, okay. Asher is playing a double giant royal giant. A uh, double prince royal giant. Very interesting versus a royal giant with just a prince. Uh, but so far, Chavo has the damage lead, which again is very, very bad for year run here. He's gonna go... Asher is gonna go with a royal giant in the back. We see a prince. As well as a royal giant at the bridge here from Chavo. Suddenly... Asher is under a lot of pressure here. Royal Giant is straight at the tower. Good luck getting the scale. He's getting everything. And that Royal Giant got a few hits in. And Havo should be able to defend this Royal Giant, I believe. We will see. Already taking a lot of damage. We're back to the Prince here shooting on that Royal Giant while hitting. And uh, yeah, defense is on point. 10 seconds left to go. 557. So Havo is probably going to go for a Royal Giant. But if needed, he can just go for a Fireball. Fireball actually kind of missed Baby Dragon there, so I'm not too sure. Okay, aggressive lightning, but a tornado's coming in, uh, pretty much denying the support here. And uh, yeah, the log, no hits. 470 left to go, and again, Chavo can't just go for a spell cycle here. He's gonna focus on defense, he's not in a hurry, but yeah, Asher is pretty sure gonna lose this here. He's gonna defend that Prince, he's gonna come in with a Royal Giant. And Asher is going to be in a lot of trouble here. Good tornado as well. That Royal Giant shouldn't get enough damage yet. Yeah, it does. And well played by Chavo. That is actually the fourth player that he has beaten in a row. And the score is just looking worse and worse for ERN right now. It is 4-1 already for midwinter here. Chavo only has to beat one more player. And he has officially swept their opponents from ERN APAC here. Saif is... Last player here. Not a bad player at all. Not a bad player at all. But will it be enough here? None of these players have been bad players. There have been some very strong and stacked teams here. But Chavo still managed to get a 4-0 in here. Can he get the 5-0? Ah, oh, yeah. Let's see. Saif is ready for this possibly last game of this match today. But maybe Scythe can also win it. We will see. It's going to be a hard battle at the very least. Alright, Chavo is taking his time here. One minute. Okay, no problemo. I'm wondering... Is Saif going to win this? He has to. Because, I mean, he has to for his team. Obviously, Chavo can't, can't just win this. But yeah, that would, I mean, he already did his deed here. We're winning against four players. 
already very, very strong from Javo here. It was close some games, but he's still here. Now, the last player from ERN APEC. Is Saif going to do it? Is he going to keep the hopes of his team alive? Or is he going to fail like the rest of his team here against Javo? Javo starting off with his Scally Barrel. We see the tornado. Is that working in activating the King Tower? It absolutely is. Interesting. Very interesting. Good activation of the King Tower here. Very important against a double barrel bait deck. But uh, already, this is looking good. Saif was maybe a little bit lucky on the starting hand, to be honest. But uh, he does have the Barbarian Barrel. He does have the Tornado against these bait attacks. Ooh, we see the healer coming in. So usually I would say healer means E-Golem. Uh, but that's not the case anymore. It could be Golem, it could be Ram Rider. I don't know, but it might as well be E-Golem. We will see what exactly Saif is bringing to the table here. But yeah, Javi... Oh, E-Dragon. So that does look like an E-Golem to me. It does look like it. But yeah, um, from my experience, if Saif is playing that E-Golem, it's like Havo has to get some good damage in the single elixir, otherwise it's going to be hard. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure what his win condition is going to be. Uh, so far, Havo is doing... Like, he's not done too much damage here, actually. We see another Scally Barrel coming in. Will we see the Tornado? What is he going to do against this? Barbarian Barrel on a Scally is interesting. Catches the eye as well. Now, what is he going to do against the Barbarian Barrel? Uh, excuse me, against the Goblin Barrel here. I think may maybe just Tornado it down. Nice. Healer Night Witch combination. Here, Healer is not hitting, so Night Witch dies, and it's just bats. Uh, they're not even going to get the Bomb Tower down because of the Princes. Good defense by Havo here. He's standing strong so far, but we are mere seconds away from the double elixir. Oh, and that barrel is getting a lot of damage, but that could only mean that Saif... Yes, Saif wants to go for a golem here. He took that damage to get a little bit of a bigger lead. And he's now going for a golem. Not a scaly barrel is coming in. Havo tries to get some elixir off of that golem here. Tries to attack onto the other side, which he does with that Dark Prince here. Night Witch in the back, though. Dark Room is actually going to be able to kill the Dark Prince, getting some damage on the tower here. But yeah, Saif is just taking it all in. He kind of has to offer up this tower here because he will lose the tower anyway. And with that King Tower, it's not even going to be a tower, by the way. The next Bomb Tower is going to come in, but that's a lot of stuff here. Saif is not going to stop reinforcing that with 20 seconds left to go. Is he going to get that tower? He probably, very probably, yes, he is going to take that tower down. And now there's 10... 12 seconds left to go. Havo needs to take that tower in time. Barbarian Barrel is there. Night Witch is there. Scary Barrel is far away. And I think Saif has done what his teammates were not able to do. He beat Havo. And that is now a hope of... Wait, a ray of hope for Saif's team. For ER and APEC here. As we go into a 2-4 score. Still for Midwinter. Still three people to beat for Saif here. But uh, it is one less here. Havo has been beaten, but the next opponent is boss. Well, definitely not going to be an easy one. But Saif, yeah, I mean, almost a sweep. Absolutely really well played by Havo. But I think it's only fair that Saif got him in the end here. So let's see how far Saif can take it. Will he go for the reverse sweep? Will he manage to do that? Again, three players is what he still has to beat. Boss is going to be the next one. We will see how Saif is doing. Alright, Saif is ready here, waiting for Boss. Again, Saif is last player. So if Boss wins, this would be the win, and they would be moving on into the semi-finals. Ah, into the finals, excuse me. Yeah, Saif is on the road to Counterswave, but it is a long and rocky one. YouTube Boss is going to be the first rock in his way here. So we see Scally's a knight. Oh, we see Expo from Boss CR, and it's actually a very aggressive. He is playing against a giant. 
And Scythe has a mini pack, so already I think Scythe has a wonderful matchup here. Yeah, that Expo is gonna die because of the mini pack up really quickly here. Jeez, Sparky! Okay, boss has the rocket, so he can Sparky uh, kill the Sparky here. And he's okay on defense. Elixir wise, he is behind though. I couldn't think of a worse matchup for Expo here, to be honest. Like, Skeleton Army, Goblin Gang, everything is just. Expo counter in here. How snipey can you get? I'm pretty sure that Scythe knew exactly what boss would choose here. Which is what you gotta do. You gotta have to match up. He's gonna go for a Skelly Gang. Alright, Skelly Gang, a Skeleton Army. Oh, interesting sap here. Getting down at the Ice Wisp. Uh, might, might have been worth a defensive Expo here. Yeah, boss definitely needs to get some defensive Expo in. There's no way for Scythe to break through. Am I overestimating? Like, really? But the Sparky? I don't believe. Well, we see. I do think that Scythe can break through an Expo here, but maybe I am wrong. With the Sparky. Yeah, I me mean with the rocket and the double buildings. You might not be that. Yeah, you might be right. I don't know. I mean, a mini, mini pack is still a thing. We will see double elixir now. Who's gonna help us more? Hmm. I'm still not sure about these skeleton armies. Like, why? Yeah, Buzz is gonna go for another defensive graveyard here. Uh, Scythe is attacking very directly here with his giants and the mini packer. Sparky in the back. Oh, tornado. No elixir for the rocket, though. But uh, yeah, Sparky can be distracted. And Aminum, I think you're very right here. Like, I'm not sure how easy. Yeah. Doesn't look like Scythe can just break through that easy. And I don't know. This could be very interesting here. Uh, I don't think either of them is really going to get damage. So Scythe is already going for this, uh, his spell damage here. Which he has to, and then cycle the Sparkies. Oh, but that Sparky in the back was a stupid idea. So this way, boss actually got damage on that tower with his, uh, with his rocket. Skill is low. Oh boy, good arrows. Wow, he's cycling crazy with his giants now. This is gonna be enough. Another mini P.E.K.K.A. Okay. I mean, yeah, boss is doing crazy on defense here. Okay. Okay, I agree. Expo is crazy on defense. How how does Scythe not get through this? How is this possible? That's just ridiculous, everybody. I'm gonna tell you. And that's not good. That's absolutely... Again, Scythe is last player for... ER and APEC here. He has a bad matchup. We're one minute left to go, and this is most probably gonna go down to a tie break. As uh, Cypher's gonna go for a Sparky in the back again, giving Boss that value on the rocket here, which I absolutely do not understand. He's gonna go for Arrows again. 50 seconds left to go. He somehow needs to get damage on that tower, and Arrows is not gonna cut it. Not a mini pack. That giant is just dying so fast. You mini. Yeah, Minion Horde is gone as well. Mini Pack is not that healthy. Knight is there. And there's absolutely no way for Scythe to get through this. So, again, now Sparky in the middle. No value on the rocket here. YouTube Boss is. He has to go for the rocket on that Sparky, right? So, I do not understand why Scythe played these Sparkies in the back. But uh, I guess. Nonetheless, uh, it wouldn't really matter as much. How. Yeah, he has Logis, a Tornado. No swarms. Yeah, Scythe cannot win this match here no matter what he does it's crazy expo is completely dominant on defense here even against a giant sparky i don't know what you i don't even know what's winning against a sparky anyway that is the win for boss cr and that therefore is the win overall for midwinter here they end the game with a solid 5-2 Hafo has won against four players here from ERN, so definitely MVP for him.
Saif kept the dream going for Yaren, but in the end against Boss and his Expo, it was not enough. And uh, yeah, again, Midwinter is going to move on into the next match. You can see below me the bracket they're going to play against Nemity. And uh, that is... Not sure when that is, actually. But uh, later tonight, there's going to be another game, I believe, where I cannot stream it. It is going to be at 10.30. But yeah, I'm not going to be able to stream then. And uh, that is going to be the end of the stream right now. So thank you, everybody, for showing up. I've had a lot of fun watching these very, very strong players. The best of the best. I mean, some of the best of the best. But uh, yeah, very fucking strong players. In the end, it was Midwinter that was dominating here. Ex exceptionally, uh, especially Javo. And uh, yeah, thank you everybody for coming up, joining. And uh, also, thank you for Bybit and Gambling. Gambling is the organization here. So thank you for doing that. And also, thank you for Bybit for sponsoring. And uh, also, you should not forget about Bybit's giveaway. So they are doing... Uh, a giveaway of five times two hundred dollars uh, in trading bonus to five lucky draw winners, and uh, the winners will be announced on 15th of June. So head to gambling.net/slash bybit where you can register and uh, yeah, hopefully go win yourself some money. I mean, 200 is a lot, and that's five of you, so definitely go check that out don't miss it that's gonna be something that you want to be a part of and uh, again thank you everybody for joining up have a good night